So you want to be part of the freelancing family? Well, I got news for you. If you don't learn how to freelance, you'd be swimming with the fishes, capiche? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But today's video is all about how to become a freelancer. If you're a graphic designer, maybe you're doing it as a hobby or a motion designer or a web designer and you're a hobbyist and you want to take it seriously and you want to become a freelancer like I did, this is going to be a great video for you. I want to teach you everything I know that I've learned along my journey and this video is going to be a very important one for you. If you want to be a freelancer, you need to have a 10 step plan, a business plan. So today's video is all about becoming a freelance graphic designer, web designer, a motion designer. We're going to cover all the steps. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Are you ready? All right. So first, what I need from you is to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I ask you guys for that on every video. If this is your first video, it means a lot to me. I wanna be able to hear back from you. And if you're a freelancer, I wanna know, are you a web designer, graphic designer, motion designer? Maybe you're all three. If you are, drop a comment, introduce yourself. I wanna to get to know you. All right, so today's video is about becoming a freelance graphic designer. Maybe you're doing it as a hobby. Maybe it's something that you're not taking very seriously because it's just something you have a passion for, but maybe you wanna figure out a way to make money from it. Well, there's a lot of ways to go about doing that. And today I'm gonna to walk you through the 10 steps that I've put together and some content that I've been able to accumulate over the years to help you guys do that and do it quicker, right? So the key to that is number one, and that's starting to build a portfolio. You have to build a portfolio of your work, start to learn how to go through and create an online portfolio as well as an offline portfolio. You can create online portfolios on websites like Dribbble. You can create portfolios on websites like Behance. There's tons and tons of websites out there where you can take your digital artwork and start putting it up online and showcasing it. It may be just fun projects that aren't for real businesses, but showcase the work that you actually do. This is a really, really important part of building your portfolio is understanding that you need to get your work offline and you need to get your work online. The offline part is building an actual printed out portfolio of your work and putting it in a nice leather bound folio, something that you can go to businesses and show when you wanna go sell or when you go to an event and showcase the quality of the work that you do. This is a really important part. A lot of people don't have a very good portfolio and this is what I want you to focus your energy around in the very beginning is building that portfolio because that's gonna help you start to build number two and that's your personal brand. Every graphic designer needs to build their personal brand. It starts with your name. I originally built my personal brand as just Adrian Boisel, and as I decided to incorporate and protect myself because of the quality that I worked that I did, I wanted to have my stuff copywritten, I wanted to have my stuff trademarked, I wanted it to be owned by a business, not just me personally, I created Adrian Graphics LLC. I was a graphic designer, and so that name was born. So I've been building that Adrian Graphics brand now since 2007. Everybody that's in my area, especially geographically, knows me as the graphics guy. They also know me now as the marketing guy. And my goal is obviously be, to be a mentor on graphics and marketing and anything creative. But it's really important you start to go out there and build that personal brand. What does your logo look like? What are your core values? What is your colors? What does your website look like? What is your portfolio? Everything should match and be cohesive across all of the different platforms that you're using it, whether it's Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, online and offline. Your business card should match everything else that you're doing. You don't wanna have your stuff scattered all over the place. So this is a really big one. Number two is creating your own personal brand. Now, number three is getting online. Yes, online world has definitely taken off with all the lockdowns and everything that's happened. It's hard to get those face-to-faces. We're not having these events that we're having out in the open anymore. We're not having networking events like we used to. Everything is virtual. So it's more important than ever. And let me say that again. It's more important than ever, ever in our history to get your brand, get your business, get your work online on social media, on, the, on sites like Dribbble. These are important elements to actually building your brand online, getting yourself in front of people. Facebook groups are a really great way to do that. LinkedIn groups are a really, really great way to do that. So there's lots of ways to get yourself online. You can even go as far, and I have another video on this so you can watch, and I'll put a little card on here so you can see that, but you can go in and actually watch uh, and put yourself on websites like Craigslist. Craigslist is a great site where you can start to build your portfolio, especially if you're at the beginning, you're gonna get a lot of cheapskates. You're gonna get people who don't wanna pay anything and they want it yesterday. But being able to set those foundations and set those expectations with them up front of like, hey, 
I'm new, I'm gonna do this for a good deal. It may take me a little bit longer, but if you're willing to wait, I will do my absolute best work. And this being flexible, knowing that you're gonna get some of those nightmare clients on there, and just being able to set some of those, those expectations up front and those boundaries with people so that they don't take advantage of you is really, really important. So be careful where you go online, but that's the big key here. So I want you to get your business online, get your brand online and start getting your name out there to the world. And even talking about it on your personal pages, your Snapchats, your Instagram, wherever you can talk about what you're doing, what your dreams are, what your visions are. People will love that. They will they will buy into that. They will they will soak it up. So it's really important that you put your story out there and that you put your work out there. And you just go out there and make yourself uncomfortable because you got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay, now number four is creating a simple business plan. For me, I wrote my very first business plan in 2006 while I was sitting in a jail cell. I'll say that one more time. I was sitting in a jail cell and I wrote my business plan because I knew that I was never gonna go back to that place again. And I'm sure that you've probably had some hard times in your life and maybe you haven't, maybe your life has been great. But if you had any hard times and you've hit the rock bottom, you know that you wanna change your trajectory of your life and the only way you can do that is by having a plan. So it's really important that you create a plan and that you stick to it and keep it simple. That's the big thing I talk about in a lot of my videos that I do is about keeping it simple. How many people are you gonna to talk to in a day? What's your offer gonna be? how much you're gonna make on that offer. These are all really important elements to creating a business plan and understanding where's your business gonna come from. Are you gonna do it on social media? Are you gonna pick up the phone? Are you gonna be emailing people? Are you gonna go to websites? Like I said, on being online, Thumbtack, uh, Upwork, Freelancer, there's tons of websites out there that you can add yourself to online, but you're gonna have to have that information inside of your business plan and stick to it. It's not that it can't evolve and change over time, but it's really important that you actually have a plan that you can stick to, that you wake up every single day and before you do anything, you read your plan, you create your to-do list and you go and take action on it and you stick to that. I guarantee you, if you do that every single day, day in and day out for 365 days, by the time you get to the end of the year, you will be blown away about where you're at. You will, it will shock you because it happened to me. I couldn't believe after one year of focusing and having a business plan, how much of a transformation it made in my business. All right, so number five, we're gonna jump into this, is start talking to clients. Start going out there and looking for clients. Not just doing free pro bono work like you might do in the beginning for friends and family and just hooking people up to get your name out there and build your portfolio, but now it's time to start small and going out there and getting small clients. Like I said, on Craigslist, on Upwork, on Fiverr. That's another website and another resource that you can do that you can put yourself on. And there's some other ones out there, but these are some of the ones that are the most popular where there's a large demand or you can go out there and do a $10 logo or a $30 logo or a $50 logo. You wanna start small and focus in on just building that client database, building those relationships with people and just serving people, learning how to overcome those objections, how to overcome the sales objections, overcoming the challenges that you're gonna have when dealing with small businesses. It's really important to get your feet wet and get some experience in there first, okay? Now let's jump to number six. Number six is a big one for me. This is where my business really started to transform. As I started doing events, online events and offline events. From being on podcasts, to being in virtual seminars, to being in online networking groups, I started really putting myself out there and even to the point where I started getting on stages, going to networking groups and speaking at the front of the room. When you start showing that you're confident, it positions you as the expert. And when you're the expert, you immediately build trust with people, you immediately build credibility. And that's what you wanna do, is you wanna build credibility and show that you're passionate, that you're excited, and that you know what you're talking about. So it's important to go out there and network network at events and network at virtual events and, and networking groups, but I know it's restricted right now. So in the meantime, things that you can do is you can network with other business owners on social media, going into LinkedIn groups, going into, into different niches, which we're gonna talk about. So over time, and as you start to get more experience in your field, I want you to start to broaden your experience as well. So I want you to go into other areas of graphic design, start to experience those types of things. So not just doing logo design, but doing print design, maybe doing some web design, maybe doing some PowerPoint presentation deck design. Um, there's all kinds of YouTube thumbnail design. There's all kinds of different design work that you could do. So you wanna to start to broaden the type of design work that you do, not just print design, not just logo design. It's really important. And then you also wanna broaden the amount of clients and the types of clients that you have. So in the beginning, you may go after a bunch of the little mom and pop businesses. Now I want you to start to expand, start to test the waters into some medium sized businesses. And if you have some relationships with people at big businesses, 
maybe take a project or two on for a big business. There are big corporations out there like Disney and Red Bull and companies like that that are looking to send work to contractors on a one-off basis, just one-time projects. So you can find work out there like that, but it's important you start to broaden the type of work that you do and also broaden the type of clients that you work with. The, number, the next thing is number eight. And number eight is creating a referral network. This is a really key area that I've been able to really grow my business. I hooked up with a company that does live streaming events for politicians and they're sending us motion graphics work. I've linked up with print shops that sent me graphic design work or marketing work. I've linked up with legal firms that have sent me all kinds of marketing work. There's all kinds of channel partners, if you will, or referral partners that you can associate yourself with. Tax firms, people that are working with businesses exclusively, those are great referral networks. You can pay them for those referrals. You can pay consultants, you can pay coaches, you can pay speakers, you can pay authors. Getting into the referral mindset and paying people for referrals is a really great way to build your freelancing business. So this is another one I want you to really focus in on and bring in more business. This, this our people out there are gonna be like your salespeople. They're gonna be advocates for you. And in return, I want you to do something for nice for them. For example, you can actually go out there and pick up the phone and say, hey, I just got a client that you sent me over. I wanted to send you over this gift card or I wanted to send you over this Venmo payment and let's let you know we just wrapped up their project. They're super happy and so you can touch bases with them and just let the client know of where you're at from the referral. So let me back up a little bit. When somebody sends you a referral, they're giving their credibility to you. They're putting their neck on the line for you. So it's really important that you go back to that person and let them know that that customer that they referred to you is happy, the customer or the client. So that's a really big one that I do as well as I keep my clients and my friends and my referral partners in the loop of what's going on with the people that they send me. It's really important. If the more you do that, the more they'll send you. Number nine, find a niche market, an industry specific niche like home improvement, like legal, like environmental, like graphic design, web design, motion design. You gotta find your niche. They say that the niches are, the riches are in the niches. That's how it goes. And so if you go after a specific niche, you start to eliminate those learning curves. And learning curves, when you eliminate those, allow you to go faster. And so what you can do is you can start to replicate things, especially on the marketing side. You can replicate stuff to make your job a lot easier and you're not having to learn new industries, new terminologies, things like that. So that'll really cut down the amount of time. I started doing this about three years ago and I watched my business completely double in one year. So you gotta make sure that you go specific, go after a niche that you love. Maybe you're a skateboarder, maybe you're a biker, maybe you're a car guy. Find something that you're passionate about that you can add value to, that you have a lot of knowledge in. Those are really great things that you can do. And forgive my hair because it's just so on fleek today. But you gotta make sure that you focus on a niche and you go after that and you become the expert in that niche. Once you've mastered that niche, you can start to expand, or in another example, add more lanes to your freeway, but you wanna master one first. You may start off with working with a bunch of little tiny small mom and pop businesses, but once you get a good enough base of customers, you can start to really niche down and focus on one that really brings you passion, that you find a lot of momentum in, and that's bringing you joy. So those are the nine, and then number 10, of course, is I want you to pay yourself. I want you to pay yourself a salary. This is separate from the business, this is something you need to completely separate uh, business and personal. So you need you to go get a business account, start putting your expenses on your business card, start doing things like that and don't mix your personal expenses with your business expenses. And I want you to pay yourself. In fact, I want you to pay yourself so much that it makes you uncomfortable because this is something that I had to take 10 years to do and once I finally did it, it changed my life. I actually started paying myself what I was worth. The amount of value that I bring to the business and the amount of value that you bring to the business as the freelancer, as the person that's going out there and generating the work and wearing all the hats and doing the sales, doing the collections and doing the finances and doing all these different things that you're doing in the business, the more you deserve to get paid. And I feel like if you're handling things and solving problems and doing great work, you should pay yourself well, whether that's 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 or $10,000 a month, just depends on how much money you're bringing in. But just as a general rule, I try to pay myself between 10 and 20% of what the business is making. And so for me, I've been able to bump my salary up higher than it's ever been in my whole life. And it's fueled me and given me an incentive and actually given me something to be able to attain kind of the next level. And the bigger my salary has gotten, the more success my business has had because I'm actually giving myself a real reward. If you're going out there and working 40, 50, 60, 70, or 80 hour weeks and you're making three grand a month, how motivated are you gonna be? I don't care how much of a passionate artist you are, 
it's gonna limit the amount of revenue and the amount of effort that you'll wanna go out there and do and the efficiency. When you start paying yourself what you're worth, you'll watch what happens, it'll be crazy, I promise you that. So those are the 10 tips for you guys. I hope this is very helpful. If you wanna start being a graphic designer or a freelance graphic designer, these are the 10 things that I would suggest you do first. I got a lot of great content, so I would love for you guys to subscribe to the channel so you can get all the updates. And if you want community and you want support and you want a mentor and you want somebody that's gonna take you deeper and help you actually reach that six figure mark and the seven figure mark, which I'm moving into hopefully very soon, this, we have a community. This is called Instagraphics Pro Network. So I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video. I would love for you guys to check it out. It's called Instagraphics Pro Network and you can find it exclusively on Facebook right now. So go check it out, Instagraphics Pro Network. The link is in the description. And I just thank you guys for tuning in and watching. And I'll see you guys on the next video. As always, keep looking up.